Ezekiel chapter 2, verse number 8. Thou son of man, title of Ezekiel and Jesus, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house, Israel. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was set unto me. Is there a body to that hand? Is that like the hand that Belsizer? He saw a hand writing on the wall? What is it about Babylon that you see this hand? And then where did, did Satan get the idea for the Adams family? Just have a hand show up all over the place. He said, behold a hand. Nobody. Was sent unto me. Here comes a hand. Ooh. And lo. A roll of a book. Was therein. Roll is a type of book. A scroll. And he spread it before me. So it's open. And it was written within and without. Both sides. Like the tables of stone. They were written on both sides. Are you not getting the scriptures? And there was written therein lamentations. Now these are not the lamentations of Jeremiah because that hasn't been written yet. Ezekiel opens up at uh, King where's his name? Jehoiakim. Jen. It's one of the, 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 the comings of King of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar. One of three times but not the one. And yet, what happens in Judah presents to us lamentations and mourning and woe. When the Bible says, woe, you better stop and pay attention. Chapter 3. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Now watch the word. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eat this roll. Eat a book. And go speak unto the house of Israel. And I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. It's not an egg roll. It's not a roll of a bun. It's a book. God is literally, literal, giving Ezekiel words to eat. That's not all our study is going to be tonight. And he said unto me, it would be God, the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody, The hand gives a book and God speaks to him. The hand writes on the wall and Daniel has to speak. You tying everything in together here? And he filled thy bowels, that's inside, and that's not your, your bodily function. Notice, fill thy bowels. Now, keep that in mind. It's not what you do in the bathroom. It's your inside. You're inside. A bowl. See the word bowl? Inside. Fill thy bowels with the roll that I've given thee. I've given thee? Go back to chapter 2. Verse 9. And I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of, that, of a book thereat. God says, chapter 3, with the roll that I get, that roll, that roll was given, that hand is God's hand. Whose hand wrote upon the wall of Belshazzar? 
then I did eat it. Not literal. Physical. This is something. I guarantee somewhere along the line, oh, it was figurative. But, you know, when Jesus said, eat my body and drink my blood, which violates the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, we're to take that literal. We're going to see taking it literal here is true. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. A natural sweetener. I know sugar is natural, but sugar can do great decay to your, your, your health. So the word of God is likened to honey. The Bible says, don't eat too much honey or you're going to get sick. You can't have your whole entire life given to the Bible. Imagine a Baptist preacher saying that. You got to have a life. You got to make a living. You got to have time for your wife, your children. You can't study all the time. These people that go in these Bible calls and it's just Bible, 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 and you come out nothing. But now we move on. Jeremiah. Oh. Jeremiah. Hope I got this right. 15. Can't read my writing. 16. Watch the word. As we go scripture with scripture, beyond doubt, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found. You recognize that word? And I did eat them. Did you find that? Cross references. And thy word, thy word was unto me the joy of and the rejoicing of my heart. Did you get the bowels? Remember I said inside the human? What's inside the human? Part of it is your heart. Honey is more better for your heart in proper proportion than sugar. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. It would be better for you to put honey, a little bit of honey in your coffee than sugar or that other stuff. It's healthier. Okay. Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Catch all the words. And if you don't catch the words, go back to this video and re-listen. Psalms 19 verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea. Dutch much fine gold. There's a gold and there's a fine gold. The temple was made of fine gold. Sweeter also than honey. Uh, 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 I want that what that is. What's the cross reference to that that we learned so far? And the honeycomb. That's where honey comes from. So let's get back to verse 7 of 19. The law of the Lord is perfect. Moses wrote five books of the Bible and they're called the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, what is that? That's a book. I'm not saying what Jeremiah, like Ezekiel, is the Genesis and all. That's not it. But it's the word. Converting the soul. You can't have any conversion of any soul in any dispensation without the word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of of God. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Again, testimony is the word. The statutes of the Lord are right. Statutes are the word. Rejoicing the what did Jeremiah say? Run the cross references. 
The commandment of the Lord is pure. What's the commandment of the Lord? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What was the commandment of the Lord? It was written on both sides of the tablet. Or tables. Enlightening the eyes. Allah, uh, Ezekiel was enlightened. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous again. And those judgments are written in the law. More to be desired are they than gold and much finer, much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And the cross references is the word. And we're not going to do 11, 12, and 13. It's not far away, but look at verse 14. Let the words of my mouth. Oh, did, you get, did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? The meditation of my heart. Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you follow the cross reference? My strength. See the Lord all my strength? Do you know the Bible? Have you read the old boring testament? There's a man, and he's come back from battle, and they're walking through the woods, and they're all hungry and starving, and they have no strength. And he sees honey dripping from a tree, takes forth his rod and grabs himself a little, uh, a little honey and puts it to his mouth, and you find out what happened. You know the cross reference? Do you read the old boring testament? You got to study and read the Bible not to be ashamed. We're running all the cross references. By the way, you want to go back, you get a concordance, you look up online, you look up Jonathan, Saul's son. He got strength by eating a little bit of honey. And a little trouble happened after that, but he was spared. But we're not done. Psalms 119. I'm in no rush. Psalms 119, 103. You know what all Psalms 119 is about? It's about the Word. The longest chapter in the Bible is all about the Word. Now, if you, if you doubted to what we've been speaking, Psalms 119, 103, how sweet, you did get the cross-reference, are thy words unto my taste, you did get the cross-reference. Yea, sweeter, you got the cross reference, than honey to my mouth. I hope you got all the, all the go back and re listen. Go down and write down with a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, whatever you write best with, and write down the cross references and the words and underline the words in your Bible as you write the cross reference. But we're not done. Wouldn't there be one more person, one more character, one more book that we would look up? That we're going to be seeing quite frequent? Revelation. Chapter 10. Revelation. That's my favorite book. I don't read any book but Revelation. Now, Jeremiah wrote to the Jews. Psalms is written to the Jews. Ezekiel is written to the Jews. In Revelation chapter 10, the church is gone. It's written to Jews. If you're going to claim Revelation chapter 10 as a church, you are misapplying the scriptures. The church goes up before the tribulation period. And after the church goes up, you are in a time called Jacob's trouble. The church is gone from chapter 4. So chapter 10, until the church comes back in verse 19, chapter 10 is Ezekiel writing to the Jews like Jeremiah. 
Now watch what happens. Chapter 10, verse 8. This is John. The voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again. Ezekiel's hearing the message from the, that, that cherubim with wheels and and said, Go and take the little book. Oh, there's a book. Which is open. Was not Ezekiel's roll of a book open? Now, I'm not saying they're the same. I'm just saying, look at the, the two men. In the hand, you did get that one, didn't you? Of the angel. Now we saw with the scriptures, the hand uh, that Ezekiel got it from was actually from God. John is going to get a book from a hand from an angel. Ezekiel is all about God. And Revelation, man, there's a lot of angels running around. They don't fly around. Which standeth upon the sea, probably Mediterranean, upon the earth. The Romans would call that Neptune. As would you Americans like with the planet called Neptune. All our, pres all our planets but the earth are named for Roman gods. And you want God bless America. No. All your calendars are named for Roman gods. And you want in God we trust. No. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Now John had to ask for it. It was handed to Ezekiel. And he said unto me, the angel, God spoke to Ezekiel, take it. Same thing to Ezekiel. And eat it up. Same thing to Ezekiel. It shall make thy belly bitter. That's nothing to do with Ezekiel. But, it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. That's Ezekiel. I took the little book out of the angel's hand. He took the book out of God's hand. Ezekiel. And ate it up. Both of them did. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Ezekiel and John. As soon as I had eaten it. My belly was bitter. Not Ezekiel. But Ezekiel had lamentations, woes, and mournings in the world that he ate. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people. Ezekiel's going to prophesy to the Jews. He'll have some nations, but nations, tongues, and kings. Now there's a difference between the two men in that there is a bitterness in the belly. Ezekiel is speaking to a group of people that Jerusalem will be conquered. It will be destroyed, the temple and all. But it will be rebuilt under Ezra and Nehemiah. And there will be a temple in the time of Jesus. And they will be in the land, the time of Jesus, and they will be in, in the land prepared, World War I, World War II. But the bitterness that we see of John could be the prophecy of the period of time that's already begun, the tribulation period. Now we go into chapter 11. We are looking at the measurement of the temple. We are looking at possibly, most likely would be Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah and 144,000 going all around and preaching the gospel to the Jews. And Moses and Elijah are killed while they have Christmas afterwards. 
And then there's the rapture of Moses and Elijah. Now, you don't want to read the boring Old Testament. You just love Revelation. Look at Revelation 11, 14. Read that to me for a moment. What is that? Two O's. Look at verse 18. The nations were angry. Chapter 12. Here's a, here's a nation of Israel and a child be born. I don't know who the child is. But here's a great white here is a great red dragon who wants to have a mass and eat the body and blood of a Jewish child. Who is called Satan, the devil, and the old serpent. And he's cast to the earth, and he knows he has but a little time. I hope you read it all. And he is completely angry against one group of people called the Jews, which is Right now, no church age. They're gone. Well, no wonder in the belly of John, it would be better. My God, what's going to happen to him? My brethren, John's, John was Jewish. So it seems like the prophecy of Revelation gives John a Bitter stomach. There, there's a place he said, um, is it? Where is it? Let me look at it real quick. One place that John has, I'm trying to find out. Uh, Look, look at look at chapter 17 verse 5 17 4 17 3 now watch this and then think about the think about this for a moment all right this is John he's in the island of Patmos for the word of God so he carried me away in spirit like Ezekiel will be in the next part we study Lord willing and we've already seen Ezekiel in that spirit Interesting. I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast. Beast in the Bible. Outside the cherubims. Are not a good beast. Full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. The woman is, is arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl. Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filth of her fornication. And upon her forehead, now this woman is not available to John. Now John is living in the time of Nero. What? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of Europe. That must be one big forehead. I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints. She's killing Jews, not Christians. We're in heaven right now. Though she has killed Christians. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, that can be the Christians, and that can also be the tribulation saints. Both will fit. And when I saw her, John, I wondered with great admiration. John sees this and is like, what on earth could be worse than Nero? And if only God would hand John, which it hasn't been written yet, Fox's Book of Martyrs. And the angel said, why didst thou marvel? I'll show you the mystery. And the mystery turns out to be the Catholic Church. Though people don't want to believe it, but it matches. And this all gives John an upset stomach. <laughs> 
And you know what will happen later on? Both Ezekiel and John. Ezekiel will tell us about the millennial kingdom of the temple. John will go forward to tell us about New Jerusalem. The millennial kingdom of the Jews and Jesus Christ. And John will tell us about New Jerusalem and Jesus Christ. You better find out these two men are parallel. And we found Daniel. And we keep finding Jeremiah. And if you find the boring Old Testament boring and you don't read and you say, well, I don't understand. I got one word of advice for you. You better pick up your King James 1611 Bible and any other Bible, you better put that in the garbage can and shred it and burn it and pee on it and let your neighbor's cats pee on it. You don't want anybody to take that out of your garbage and use it. You don't want that recycled. You need to get a King James Bible and you need to, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And you need to keep reading to, even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. And you go back to, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And you read it all. So you get to, even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. And you go back to, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And you keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it until God calls you home, rapture or death. I find it hard to understand. You're not going to get it the first time. You may get something the second time. I have read the Bible since 2000 many times throughout the year. I'm still learning. I ain't never going to master. I don't even think we're going to master the Bible when we get to heaven. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That means they never stop. 